Hey, this is Michael Lindsay from VitalMX, and welcome back to another episode of In Depth. Today's subject is Jet Lawrence's Team Honda HRC CRF 250R. This will be the last 250 that we ever see Jet Lawrence race as he moves full-time to the 450 come the 2023 Pro Motocross Championship. This is the second year that they have raced on this platform, so not a lot has changed from the outside. There are a few tidbits, but there is a lot of trick components in this machine. Of course, this bike is prepped, maintained, and built by Christian Ducharme, who he has worked with since it was at Geico Honda and they moved to the HRC squad together. So kicking off really what's different this year, there's a couple little things they've changed on the spec, but the biggest thing from the outside looking in is the fact that they have moved to get data loggers and ECUs. In the past two seasons, the HRC Honda 250s have utilized Vortex ECUs while the 450s were working with factory ECUs. This year, both the 450 and 250s under the tent are using GET, allowing them to kind of keep uh, you know, a little bit more knowledge between the two, the same, even though the mapping is different, of course, but also allowing the crew to work with the same software across both bikes, where previously the factory ECUs were a little bit more controlled by Japan and that information, there wasn't as much adjustment as those guys could do on the fly. And the Vortex was on its own on the 250. So now bringing both together, just again, add some synergies across the program and will also help probably Jet and his crew work on the bike as they move 450. So one of the most unique components to me about this motorcycle, or at least <laughs> there is quite a few, uh, from the outside, you would notice the hydraulic clutch. The bike is cable clutch stock. This one has hydro, which requires a different ignition cover to accept the hydro cylinder. And then it uses the same master cylinder as we see on the 450 models. This is across both Jet and Hunter's bike, and they've been running this uh, for the past two years now. Speaking of clutch, this is something that Christian mentioned to us that Jet is probably the most picky about on his bike is the clutch feel. He says he's very careful how he maintains that hydraulic master cylinder, how it's bled, and also the pack height um, and the clutch in the bike. He says he's not very particularly hard on the clutch, so he doesn't have to change it often, but he's very careful to make sure that they have the exact same pack height um, and pressure into the clutch at all times. He said Jet really notices the difference in feel in the clutch if everything is just not perfect in the same as it was before. The engine build is pretty unique to this program. While the 450s have a lot of input from Japan, the 250 is definitely homegrown here in the US per se. The, the CRF 250R is not really raced by any factory Honda squads worldwide. They don't race uh, a factory level effort in MX2 for the MXGP championship, the world championship. And we also don't see them race the bike that much in Japan under a factory level equivalent anymore. So. A lot of the development you see here was done by Ryan Cox and Grant Hutchinson. Ryan Cox has since moved on to Pro Circuit, uh, but these are all things that they collaborated on and built this platform here in the US using suppliers here. And while there is definitely some things in there, such as transmission components, um, there's a lot of parts that were sourced here and developed here. The cam spec on this bike is as far as we're aware, it's American sourced. It is another engine developer here in the US, but is something that is kind of kept tight to the chest. The piston in the bike this year has moved over to Wiseco, a race winning brands product. Uh, if you look last year while Wiseco branding was on the 450, it wasn't on the 250. We believe they were on CP pistons last year, but this year they have moved over to Wiseco products. As with any of these bikes we talk about, the piston in the bike is not off the shelf. It is developed exclusively for their usage. Uh, we also believe that the valve train in the bike is most likely Exeldyne from what we've heard uh, based on some connections to the team. Of course, our things to the bike, such as the crank and rod um, are different components that they have selected. We believe they're on a plain bearing crank. The stock CRF 250R of course is still on a roller bearing. So that's a unique changeover. And then the biggest or the two biggest components that are changed on this bike. One of them is obvious because the HRC squad was the first to go to an electric water pump back in the outdoor season of 2021. They're still using it, of course, here in 23. And the CRF 250R particularly seems to respond better to electric water pumps than almost any other 250F due to the standard water pump shaft and impeller going through a mechanical seal. Um, I actually believe also maybe one or two rubber seals. 
it, it has a lot more drag on it than some of the other bikes do. So by switching to electric water pump, disabling the mechanical one inside and plugging it off, they're reducing some of that friction, some of that power loss by driving that in the engine, freeing it up and actually gaining a little bit of noticeable horsepower. The other really big change on this bike is the air box. The standard CRF250R has an air cleaner that is basically mounted upside down in the subframe. They've actually chopped it up and returned to the old style air filter element and they have now placed it vertically directly above the throttle bike, very similar to a Yamaha. This is one of the main reasons why we never see the Honda team take the seat off this bike. It's definitely, again, they've actually been running it for longer than people think. We think it was introduced towards the later part of Supercross last year, um, but again, they've done a really good job of keeping it kind of out of sight, out of mind. Now that it's becoming an item that is more aware, we know that a couple Honda support teams have also developed their own version of this air box. So basically, really shorting up the air track by instead of going over the shock and then flipping the air filter upside down the air box, they've cut all that out and mounted it directly again above the throttle body. So the air draw is quicker, the way that it has air available on the other side of the air filter element is different. All that really changed the power character for the better from our understanding. Something that people will notice different on the CRF250R to Chase Sexton and Colt Nichols 450 is the fact that Jet is still on a standard style A kit shock. He's not on a BFRC. That is primarily because there is no kit or homologated version of a BFRC that can be used on the 250s. The 250 class does have a price structure rule in place for suspension and basically Jet has an A-kit fork and shock on the bike that is available to the public and can be purchased through certain approved retailers through Showa or Showa directly. So we still see him basically on the shock style that we saw in the prior years on the 450 team. Another unique component, and it goes together with all things we talked about they're doing to the engine on this bike, is the Yoshimura exhaust system. The standard consumer system has a much longer head pipe, a lot closer to the stock layout. That's because that works really well with the stock power characteristic. They've done so much to this race engine that they have gone to a very short length head pipe. This changes in most cases with the, the difference in velocity. You'll end up with a bike that maybe doesn't have as much of a roll on torque feel, but might rev a little bit quicker and have a little bit more of a punch feel. The standard 250F has really good low to mid on the Honda, but was lacking a bit mid to top. So of course with anything, they're trying to get power everywhere. They've tried to improve the bottom, the mid and the top on this bike. And probably that head pipe change came around the same time as we saw an air box change. So there was definitely something there that was complementary to each other to get the bike to pick up and move how they wanted it. You see other really cool HRC components through this bike, such as works hubs, uh, the works foot pegs and foot peg brackets, the factory triple clamps, all those really cool HRC parts that have been just standouts forever on these bikes. Another unique one with his setup, while he apparently runs a very standard foot peg, foot peg bracket height, he does run really tall bar mounts. According to his mechanic, it's one of the tallest options they have. And he's actually been like that pretty much since he's ever, he's moved to big bikes. Said uh, he feels like it allows him to stay more neutral on the bike, having him in that position. However, with the bar combination he uses, they don't look ridiculously tall until you start to really take a closer eye. Another unique one is that they have added the Honda steering damper or the Showa steering damper back to these bikes. Honda discontinued using these on the production bikes about two years ago on the 250 and three years ago on the 450. So they've had to weld a mount back onto the frame for it. And then of course their triple clamps are built with, built with a receiver. This is only on the 250s from what we've seen. We have not seen the 450 riders on the team using them. Another component they have custom fabricated are these little carbon fiber wings that are coming off the frame. If you were to see the bike from the right side, you'd think, oh, it's a rear brake master cylinder guard. Not quite. These were made by Grant Hutchinson to give the guys more grip on the bike. A comment that both Jet and Hunter had is where the way they ride, the way they wanted to squeeze the bike, they felt like they were missing a contact point. So they've added both of these off the back of the frame. On the right side, it mounts to the master cylinder mounts. On the left side, they've actually had to weld two mounts to the frame, which is totally legal. You can add material from to a frame, but you cannot take material away from a frame. So they have those guards with a little bit of grip tape on each side, just to give him an extra contact point that he can manipulate and control the bike from. One other unique part we noticed is on the water pump spigot on the production Honda water pump, that piece is actually press fitted into the top of the housing. Take a mud race, really extreme situations. You get a lot of heat in the bike, you get a lot of pressure. That part can actually pop out under extreme rare circumstances. We've seen support teams wire tie it down into the case to hold it. 
The HRC part, however, is a little bit different. It's actually a welded spigot that is bolted into the water pump. So that water pump cover itself is also a unique item to have that bolt-in option. Outside of that, there's a lot of really typical components that you would see on an HRC bike, such as Renthal bars and grips. Another unique one is that Jet uses the softest tacky gummy compound they use, so he burns through his grips pretty quickly, but he really likes that really tacky gummy feel. Uh, we also have DID chains and rims on this bike, the factory spec Dunlop tires, along with hints and clutch components, and again, throttle jockey, just things that we are very used to seeing on HRC. They do not change things often on the bike. They kind of work with the same brands every year. So a lot of the same, same that we're used to seeing out of these guys. We could go on and on about this bike for literally probably an hour. There's so many little components. If you would like to learn more about this machine, hit the link in the description. There's actually going to be an extended version of this feature on our website at biomex.com that that link will take you to with a ton of detailed photos. I'm gonna write out a few more captions and try to break down a few more of the small parts on this bike and some of the unique things we learned talking to the team and the mechanic for this machine. If you like these in-depth features, please give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe and check us out for the next episode.